King William IV. Among the contemporary British monarchs, a few receive as little attention as King William IV. However, upon delving into his biography, we discover a life characterised by daring, indulgence and an anti-establishment attitude that seems incompatible with his royal position. Today we will examine William IV, the most eccentric individual to ever occupy the British throne. But before we proceed, make sure to subscribe to Past People. And after that, leave a comment suggesting other unorthodox rulers that you'd like to learn about. Now let's explore the story of a man who accidentally became king. William Henry, a member of the Hanoverian dynasty, was born on the 21st of August 1765. Although he eventually ascended to the throne as King William IV, his chances seemed slim in the beginning. At that time, his father, King George III, was in his 20s and had only begun what would become a reign lasting nearly 60 years. Moreover, George III had two older sons, George and Frederick, who stood ahead of William in the line of succession. From William's perspective, there was no real pressure on him to conform while growing up. He enjoyed the freedom to lead a life wholly unsuited for a future king, and he embraced it. At the age of 13, William enlisted into the Royal Navy, and while one might assume that a privileged prince might undertake a cushy assignment close to home, William ventured into war for his nation at an age when most individuals were in 8th grade. He served in North America and the Caribbean, even participating in the Battle of Cape St. Vincent in 1780. Additionally, he forged a close relationship with the renowned Admiral Horatio Nelson, who achieved crucial victories in the Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. When William eventually ascended to the throne several decades later, his 12 years of service earned him the moniker of the Sailor King. By the time William reached his teenage years and joined the Royal Navy, the United States had declared its independence and the Revolutionary War was in progress. William served in New York, making him the sole member of the British royal family to set foot on American soil during the Revolution. It's an impressive distinction for a young man who had only just started shaving. And of course, there were drawbacks. William understood that his princely status made him an exceptionally valuable target for the rebel forces. Yet despite the obvious danger, he took pleasure in strolling around the city unaccompanied. Perhaps being captured for ransom was on the bucket list. Rumours about these excursions eventually reached General George Washington, the Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army and future face of the One Dollar Bill. Washington promptly sanctioned a plot to seize the adolescent prince, and in a letter to his accomplice he expressed enthusiasm, stating that the boldness evident in your plan to surprise Prince William Henry and Admiral Digby in their quarters deserves praise. In other words, Operation Abduct the Posh Teenager was a go. Washington authorised them to execute the plan in any manner and at the opportune time but he cautioned against showing disrespect or harm to the prince or admiral. Just because it's a kidnapping doesn't mean it has to be impolite. The message was clear. Washington's determination to capture Prince William knew no bounds. He was adamant about bringing the young prince to him by any means necessary. Yet fortune favoured William, as the Redcoats caught wind of the audacious plot and promptly assigned guards to him, ensuring his safety. But William, undeterred by the looming threat of Washington's gung-ho abduction plan, found a clever solution. He simply brought the guards along with him on his excursions around the city, outsmarting Washington's every move. William's naval career spanned an impressive 12 years, although naval career, in this case, often meant revelling in merriment and mischief while in close proximity to the water. He became well known for his penchant for drinking and causing trouble during his time in the Navy. Among his less regal exploits was a drunken brawl in Gibraltar that made headlines. Despite his rowdy reputation, William decided to retire from active service in 1790 at the age of 25. 
However, retirement from the Navy did not mean retirement from his sailor-like drinking habits. And when war erupted between Britain and France in 1790, William's thirst for adventure resurfaced, and he repeatedly sought command of a ship. He delivered a series of speeches in the House of Lords, some of which were well received, while others caused great concern for being visibly drunk. These erratic episodes, coupled with William's recent misfortune of falling down a flight of stairs and breaking his arm, led to the king to firmly believe that William should not return to the navy. Despite being denied the opportunity to command a ship, William remained eager to be involved in the action, persistently raising the subject whenever the British found themselves embroiled in conflict. However, the king and the admiralty continued to turn him down, citing his personal issues as a hindrance. Undeterred, William sought alternative ways to be close to the action. In 1813, he witnessed the bombardment of the Antwerp and atop a church steeple, risking his life as shells rained down upon him. It is even rumoured that he received a contusion from the explosion of a shell, though some speculate that he may have even caused the explosion himself. According to a modern account during the final attack, a bullet pierced through his coat, narrowly missing him. Excluded from the Navy, William decided to venture into politics, a popular career choice for those born into a royal family. While most individuals experience a high-profile dismissal only to find themselves working mundane jobs, William took a different path. He served in the House of Lords where he expressed opinions that in hindsight did not age very well. For instance, he staunchly opposed the abolishment of slavery in British colonies, arguing that enslaved individuals in North America and the Caribbean were content in their state of humble happiness. His views on this matter were undeniably problematic. However, not all of William's beliefs were steeped in authoritarianism. He also advocated for progressive laws concerning religious freedom and the treatment of adultery, showcasing a more enlightened side of his character. Despite his tumultual reputation, William managed to serve a brief but eventful stint as Lord High Admiral in 1827. However, his disdain for authority clashed with the admiralty officers he was required to work with. The conflicts reached a tipping point when William decided to make a dramatic statement. Instead of storming off to the pub, he took matters into his own hands and commanded a squadron of ships, disappearing for a whopping ten days. As both Lord High Admiral and a Prince, he possessed the audacity to undertake such a bold move. King George IV, his brother, had no choice but to request his resignation from the position. In his personal life, William had a long-standing relationship with an Irish actress and comedian known as Dorothea Jordan. Although they never married, their love knew no bounds as they welcomed ten children together. However, their circumstances changed when Princess Charlotte of Wales, the daughter of William's elder brother George, tragically passed away in 1811. This sudden loss meant that King George III had no legitimate grandchildren, thereby placing the burden on William and his brothers to produce an heir. As a result, William and Dorothea separated, and he went on to marry Princess Adeline of Saxon-Menegan, a woman that was half of his age. While they were unable to conceive a surviving heir, they reportedly enjoyed a blissful marriage. In 1820, King George III, who had reigned for nearly 60 years, passed away, and at this point his two eldest sons, George and Frederick, were approaching their 60s and weren't in the best of health. Additionally, they had no heirs to continue the line of succession, and when Frederick died in 1827, William unexpectedly found himself as the heir presumptive. The realisation that he had a legitimate chance at becoming king prompted him to reduce his drinking and take up his beloved long walks again. With George Washington long gone, William no longer feared for his previous abduction attempts, and upon the passing of King George IV in 1830, William ascended the throne before becoming the monarch of the United Kingdom. 
At the age of 64, King William IV became the oldest king to be crowned in British history, a record that he held for quite some time, until recently broken by the coronation of King Charles III at the age of 73, on the 6th of May 2023. Now, when people envision the British royal family, the iconic Buckingham Palace comes to mind. However, it may surprise many to know that there was a time when a king wished to give it away. That king was none other than William himself, who attempted to disown the property on more than one occasion. William's informal nature as a monarch, coupled with his seafaring background, likely influenced this unconventional approach. King William IV, the unconventional ruler of the British throne, had a unique approach to royal living. Unlike his predecessors, he refused to reside in Buckingham Palace, finding the grandeur and formality of the place discomforting. His aversion led him to offer the palace to the British army as high-class barracks, but that plan didn't materialise. Undeterred, he then attempted to transform Buckingham Palace into the new Parliament after the previous Houses of Parliament were destroyed in a fire in 1834. However, Parliament politely declined his proposal, leaving his vision unrealised. Despite his relatively short reign of only seven years, William IV had a crucial objective in mind to outlive his niece, Princess Victoria, until she had reached the age of 18. Victoria, the daughter of William's deceased younger brother Edward, held the key to the succession. While William held affection for Victoria, he held a strong dislike for her mother, the Duchess of Kent. Driven by spite towards the Duchess, William was determined to ensure that Victoria would never be under her mother's regency. His tenacity paid off as he managed to survive long enough to witness Victoria assume the throne just one month after her 18th birthday, marking the beginning of the renowned Victorian era, the era adored by steampunk enthusiasts. So what are your thoughts on William IV? Was he a charming scoundrel or a daring and impulsive individual?